I feel like for as long as flopping has been a thing, it's been considered bad. Like if you're in your flop era, you're probably broke, down terrible, or showing up on a podcast run by one of the Paul brothers. But lately I've been looking back on some past flop eras and I'm starting to feel like there's a bright side to all this floppery. I mean, obviously you guys know I'm a very positive person who's always looking at the bright side of things. Like, Maybe it's just my empathic, positive nature. But seriously though, if you think about it, flop eras have delivered some of the most entertaining pop culture moments, and I feel like it's about time we explore it. Quick side note, there's nothing actually wrong with flopping, obviously. It's only natural. Everyone's been in their flop era at some point. I, for one, have never left mine. I burnt water yesterday trying to cook dinner, so take flop in this video as a term of endearment in a way. Before we get into it though, quick thank you to Native for sponsoring. I've been using Native deodorant for years now and I'm a really big fan. They've actually recently come out with new and improved packaging that makes the deodorants not just earth friendly, but 100% plastic free. It's made with 90% post-consumer recycled paper and you actually save 37 grams of single-use plastic with every plastic free deodorant purchase, which is really cool. They also commit to sourcing paper for their packaging from responsibly managed forests, as well as 1% of their plastic free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits since they're a partner of 1% for the planet. The deodorant in itself though is really great. It dries quickly, it isn't sticky, and it's actually aluminum, paraben, and cruelty free. It's also vegan and has really simple ingredients like coconut and shea butter. My favorite part about the brand though is definitely the scents. They remind me a lot of how niche candles can get, which I love because I feel like deodorant scents can sometimes be a bit basic. The scents that I got this time around were eucalyptus and mint, which I feel like is very earthy and herbal, but the mint also is very present. Aloe and green tea, which is from their sensitive line, Hopefully this makes sense, but it smells like the color of the green on the packaging. Like it's very clean and calming. And the last one that I got is lavender and rose. I love all of them, but I'd say this one is definitely my favorite. It just smells like a spa. It's like the perfect mix between lavender and floral. I want it as a natural candle. Those are just a few though. There are tons of different options to choose from, including limited edition and sensitive options. Regardless of whichever formula you do end up going with though, you're gonna get 72 hour odor protection. So if you're looking to try out some for yourself, typically three plastic free deodorants would be $29. But if you use my link in code Casey, you can get them for $26 at 33% off. Plus you can also get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste with the code as well. So. Definitely check it out if you're interested. Thanks again to Nada for sponsoring though. Check out the description box if you're interested, but otherwise let's get back into the video. There is a recent flop we will eventually be getting to because you guys will not let me forget about it, but I want to start off with Katy Perry. I'm sure she needs no introduction. I will offer the suggestion that she gets off Twitter because I have no idea what she's trying to do on there. Maybe your firework is a 10, but women in the US have fewer rights than an actual sparkler. Shake my head. I'm assuming she's trying to build off the is a 10 butt trend, but doesn't really seem to understand how it works. I think a better example would probably be Katy Perry is a 10, but she released Witness. But apart from tweeting, Katy recently had a residency in Las Vegas, also gets paid $25 million to judge people singing and say wig. I know, wig, I feel that already. And she also sells shoes. And you might be thinking that doesn't sound like a flop at all. And honestly, I'd agree with you. But I think she gets her flop title because in comparison to previous eras and her ability to fart into a mic and it go number one on Billboard, her last two eras haven't done as well. And a lot of people, myself included actually, think that it's due to one particular album, Witness. The album was supposed to be, according to Katie herself, purposeful pop. And that descriptor alone got her in shit because she spent a lot of time introducing this album before its release as a self-aware political album. But when people actually went to listen to it, they realized it really wasn't. That aside though, music-wise personally, I actually really enjoyed the album. I thought Bon Appetit and Swish Swish were fun. Dare I say I was chained to the rhythm a little bit. Nobody else was though, which was kind of the whole problem. I Stockholm Syndrome myself into liking this. So clearly you don't need to do much to impress me. I do feel bad for her a bit though, because I feel like it wasn't just her campaigning the album as a woke purposeful album that made it flop so hard, but that she also got a new Karen-esque haircut that for a lot of people only made her seem more cringy to the public, which was made even worse by the Bon Appetit performance. Oh my God, I forgot how bad this was. Which sucks because why do men get to perform in sweatpants while Katy Perry can't promote one album looking like Ellen? I don't think that's very fair, but here's the thing about a flop era, a silver lining, if you will. It opens up potential avenues you would have never considered before, which you might be thinking I'm referring to the Las Vegas residency, but I'm actually talking about her Jesse promotional song. Do you really think she would have sang this if Smile wasn't being outpeaked by Taylor's re-recordings right now? I don't think so. Like, why is it kind of good? The looks, the drama, the production of it all. Some of your faves would not be able to keep up. Ding dong, ring a ding 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 dong. Did somebody say just eat? 
Bon Appetit for me, Katy Perry. And I don't want to hear anything about the lyrics. This is more complexity than like 90% of the nursery rhymes torturing TikTok right now. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. My boyfriend just cheated on me. I would say in all though, she's had a very successful flop era. Not only in terms of like obviously being monetarily successful, but in terms of entertainment. Wait. On another note though, I unfortunately have found myself in a position where I've talked about Liam Payne enough that people will tag me and stuff about him if he's trending. And if I could show you the amount of times that this video was sent to me in my DM requests, oh my God, as I'm sure we all know, Liam Payne is a former member of One Direction and compared to the other members, hasn't been doing as well. One might even argue he is actively flopping. What possessed him or his team though to think that wandering onto a Logan Paul podcast would fix that is completely beyond me. I get that they have 3 million subscribers, but what about us? We may not have 3 million subscribers in a crypto scam, but we have, I'm trying to think of a redeeming quality. We could have ranked your discography. It wouldn't have gone very well, but I mean, neither did this. The episode all came about spur of the moment though, because both Logan and Liam were at a Gary V convention. Because I mean, of course he's behind this. Gary V collects off-trend celebrities trying to cosplay as businessmen like Infinity Stones. I like to think of him as the hey hun of the celebrity world. The hour long podcast though can pretty much be summarized as Liam Payne talking a little bit about One Direction, a lot about fighting people with his shirt off, one host who kept making direction related jokes that did not land once, and these two clips specifically that went viral online. Yeah, we did the first song, billion streams. I think it outsold ev everybody within the band. There was an argument backstage and someone, one ma member in particular threw me up a wall. So I said to him, if you don't remove those hands, there's a high likelihood you'll never use them again. Kill me? Now, I feel like right now Liam Payne symbolically is that one video from Jimmy Fallon where Usher thinks he's in the center, but he's everywhere but there. I just can't stress enough how hard it was to get through this podcast. It was just so obvious that Logan Paul and his co-host did not prep for this at all. Like, how do you let Liam Payne bring up the wanted drama himself and not ask him to explain more? Untapped chlamydia boy lore was right there and we lost it because the people running this podcast wanted to talk about NFTs. I have to admit though, it did make sense why they brought it up. We've talked about it on the channel before that Liam is very into crypto and NFTs right now, and he's been peddling it pretty aggressively to his fans. Which listen, if Logan Lerman can survive off nostalgia and vibes since 2013, he's got at least five more years until it's socially understandable to turn into a snake oil salesman. Like you're still pulling in royalties from a band that's the 77th most listened to on Spotify. What is this? Music wise, when he wasn't implying that he was the best out of the group, he talked a little bit about his solo career and he really made it seem like he wasn't that interested in having a solo career and that it seemed to be more of an, I care more about the arts and the charts situation, which I have a hard time believing when you have a Christmas song with Dixie D'Amelio. No hate to Dixie. I just don't think a feature on a TikToker song that sounds like it was created in the lab specifically to be played in Target really screams deep cut. We also got this clip. He's Liam Payne's brother, <laughs> Liam, Liam Paul's brother. <laughs> you either die young or live long enough to see a member of a boy band used to love so just becoming a Paul brother. Do I think in an alternate universe, Liam Payne would have filled the role of Nick Crompton in Team 10? I don't know for sure anymore, and that's what's concerning. It wasn't just clips of the podcast that went viral though. It actually kickstarted a whole trend on TikTok that was based on this video of him dancing. Doesn't make it any less painful to watch, but rewatching it, it actually made me realize there's an eerily similar video like this from Lauren Haregi from Fifth Harmony. And of course we can't deny the very present Mr. Shoe energy going on here. I will say though, I don't hate this video because above all, it reminds me of those dancing beans and I love anything that reminds me of those guys. One of my friends actually suggested looking into Jesse Nelson as well, which that girl's got a single song out. Her situation's interesting though, because Boys was honestly the rockiest start I've ever seen to a solo career. Long story short, she got a ton of shit out of the gate for the song since she chose to sing about hood boys and through promoting as a solo artist, a lot of people were reminded of just how aggressively she faked hands. And by the time she performed live at Jingle Ball, most people were not a fan. However, we did get an entertaining performance though. Demi Lovato, on the other hand, had a similar situation as Katy Perry, where their most recent album, Dancing with the Devil, The Art of Starting Over, was a flop by their standards because of their previous massive success. One of the more viral moments from the album was from a song called The Kind of Lover I Am because of a certain lyric. I don't care if you've got a dick. I don't care if you got a walk. Which is cute, I guess, but it also has the anatomy of a deplorable choir song. We don't care if you're white. We don't care if you're black. 
Oh god, it's also reminding me of that BB Rexa song. The album definitely kind of came and went, and I'm sure the great yogurt fiasco of 2021 didn't help at all. If you need a bit of a refresher, Demi decided to call out a frozen yogurt store called The Big Chill because they had sugar-free options, and Demi interpreted this as them feeding into diet culture, which they struggle with because they have experiences with an eating disorder. I don't care if you've got a dick, I don't care if you've got a WAP. If anyone in this room though has diabetes, get the fuck out. Honestly though, if you're to get in any kind of controversy, at least frozen yogurt drama sounds fun on the surface. Like no one's ever gonna do that again. They kind of paved the way. Since then though, they've released a new song and they also have a TV show called Unidentified with Demi Lovato that was not received well at all. In general though, it just seems like there's something going on with their management, which is weird considering that Scooter Braun made this whole production about how he was gonna really take care of them. So very unclear on why dropping a song with no promotion and then releasing an alien show was the move. I just don't really get what target audience they're supposed to hit with this. However, I am obsessed with how famous people can turn literally anything into a show. I had this crazy experience that happened to me in Joshua Tree. It was this bright light, it kind of moved in like these weird ways. Like they just saw something in the sky and now they have an entire reality show to entertain that one curiosity. That's insane and probably shouldn't happen because the show is quite terrible. It definitely feels a lot like a Shane Dawson level production. <gasps> It's not that I don't believe in aliens or something existing outside in space, but there is just something so funny about watching people lose their shit over videos that look like someone's exploring a scalp for lice. I'm Demi Lovato, singer, activist, and UFO experiencer. UFO exp What kind of MLN ass title is that? It sounds like they're trying to beef up their resume. Like, you're Demi Lovato. You don't have to do that. The series is actually only four episodes. I did watch them, but I'm a bit apprehensive to put that footage in the video just because of copyright stuff. So I'm just gonna stick to sharing footage that they shared themselves on YouTube. Okay, she has trauma. She does? Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you and know? And that's why she doesn't like men. I'm sorry. Did this just turn into an episode of Ghost Whisperer? Is there like a translator off screen or something deciphering this right now? Because all I'm hearing is the same note going ee. Sounds like a dolphin. Rising from you may say I'm a dreamer. Go. <laughs> Standing ovation. Go. I love how it's just decided though that the ghost must be cheering and isn't like screaming in pain. Wait, maybe it's singing along. Imagine it's like an alien that just so happens to be a massive Demi Lovato fan and it's just absolutely losing its shit right now. Oh, oh, this is my son. Ah, don't look at me right now. I think that's where we'll end it off though. We laughed, we sang, we danced. I think we proved that flopping can be fun. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also check out my second channel where I post shorter commentary videos as well as my Twitch where I live stream, as well as my other social medias that I'll put in the pinned comment down below. But otherwise, thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.